Today we're making Italian wedding soup. It's that huge monster thing of escarole is for the soup. But don't worry, you can use spinach too. Let's get into it right now. So right away for the meatballs, and I like these meatballs to be really small. We're gonna make them in a second. We have three quarter pound of 80-20 chuck, three quarter pound of ground pork. Now, say you just wanna use one, you could just do all pork or all beef. I have three cloves of garlic that I made into a paste. I have a quarter cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. Why am I saying flat leaf Italian parsley? So you don't buy curly parsley. They sell that in the store, often right next to it, and that's more for garnish, not for taste. So whenever you're doing any of this type of cooking, you always wanna use the flat leaf parsley. I have a Parmesan brine. It's kind of a secret weapon on this channel. We probably have made 80 recipes with the parm rinds. Obviously, I didn't invent this technique. It's something that I've just been doing for a long time, and for any type of soup like this, it just makes it better. So save your parm rinds. Two eggs that's gonna bind these meatballs together. Quarter cup of milk that's gonna give more moisture, though you could probably omit the milk because there's a lot of fat in this meat. Half a cup of Pecorino Romano grated. So I just got a block of Locatelli there. You can use you know the pre-grated stuff, or if you want, you can just use uh, Parmesan cheese in here instead. I prefer Pecorino. Three quarter cup of plain breadcrumbs. Feel free to use Italian seasoned if you like. So that's all the meatballs uh, ingredients. We're also gonna put salt and pepper in there. For the broth, for the soup, I have two medium carrots that I diced. I just left the skin on, but I cleaned them. That's where a lot of the nutrients are. Two celery ribs diced, and I did one medium onion diced. So that's kind of like our base of the soup. Right here is an important ingredient. So I'm using homemade brodo. If you don't have this, use chicken base instead of the box chicken stock or box beef stock. That stuff is garbage. Every brand is bad. I like doing my own homemade though because there's no salt in here. Now the other ingredient in our soup is escarole or scarole. This is one of the biggest escarole heads I've ever seen, Tara. <laughs> this is like a mutant escarole head. <laughs> so we're gonna remove some of the leaves. I'm gonna show you how to prep escarole so you don't mess it up. Final thing for our soup is the pasta. So now listen, you can use any type of pasta, small pasta you like. Right here, I have a chini de pepe. So this is a little tiny thing and it'll get about four times the size when it cooks. It's great, but if you don't wanna use that one, you can be like me and collect pasta, all right? So what I do is, oh, by the way, you need eight ounces of that. But what I do is when I make all my soups, which is half a box, half a pound, I just save them all. So what, what is this, little penne, I think, or something. Um, Ditalini, this is a super common, popular one in pasta vizul. Farfellini, orzo, little macaroni elbows. It doesn't matter. You can use what you like. Okay, escarole, it is, Normally not this wide, you know, this is a big one. Just remove off the outer leaves right away. You don't need them. They're gonna be like the most bitter part. And then outer leaves here, like that are kind of like yellowing. You don't want those, but, and it's normally a lot easier. It's a lot smaller than this. So I'm just gonna cut this away. Now you could save that stuff for your compost pile or whatever. When you cut it, you want it to look like this and not have any more of that yellow outer edge there. Just rip off any parts that you see. And now when you do this, this is like super, this is probably from the hothouse. There's no, there's no dirt in here. This is odd. You know, normally we buy this thing and it's a tremendous amount of dirt. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut the end off here. Salad spinner, you're gonna have to probably do like half at a time. Basically it's like an inch and a half wide that I'm doing and then whatever the length is of it and just run it through your salad spinner, clean it. I know it's not always easy to get escarole in different parts of the country. Can you use spinach or something else? Absolutely. Traditionally, probably in Italy, they're not even using escarole for this. They're probably using a different type of green. Spinach is like not the best duplication of this. Escarole is a better one, but spinach is fine. Please, absolutely use spinach. I like using spinach in it. You can use spinach. Okay, let's do the meatballs. Three quarter cup of breadcrumb in the bowl, quarter cup of milk. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding the milk here to wet in these breadcrumbs up. I'm putting a little bit more water in there, like another tablespoon. Let it sit for five minutes. It's about five, seven minutes on this. And now we can just put everything else in. We're gonna put in our meat first. And I'm just gonna break it up, just spread it out a little bit. One teaspoon of salt in here. You're using 
Diamond kosher, double that to two teaspoons, okay? That's the ratio. If you're using Morton's, go one and a half. So it'll be one and a half teaspoons of Morton's, all right? I'm using diamond kosher, so that's one teaspoon. I'm just gonna try to push that in there, and then uh, I'll flip it and get it on the other side. And then pepper, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, I'm just gonna flip it a little bit there. And then I'll put in my other teaspoon of the salt and the pepper. So it's total of one teaspoon of salt, or again, if you're using the diamond kosher, two teaspoons. And now we can just put in all the rest of the ingredients. Half a cup of grated pecorino. We want to roll these meatballs up really small. I'm going to show you a kind of a little old school trick here. Water is going to pre prevent them sticking to you. Also, I have a parchment paper lined baking sheet. I'm probably going to need two of these because we want to roll these meatballs super small. Typically, this soup, like when they're really small, it's a really nice textural difference between the greens and, and the meatballs. So I'm going to take a little bit of my meat here. Obviously, if you are working on a massive cutting board, you can do this all in one shot. Okay, about that much. So walked into a pizzeria, saw somebody, uh, I think it was like an old woman doing this. Looked like she was making gnocchi, but she wasn't. This place actually served the meatballs as squares, <laughs> you know? So just roll them out like this. And don't worry if it comes apart because you're gonna be cutting it anyway. A little bit of water in there, help it not stick to your hands. Take a cutter, just like this, and just take a little bit here, okay? There's your section. So we want really tiny meatball. And then just, you know, just do a touch, but they can be irregular, it doesn't matter. So if you take your whole section here, okay? And then just go like this, just keep cutting them very tiny. Just go to it like that. So these are really tiny meatballs. One and a half pounds of meat, you're probably gonna have like a hundred and something meatballs. I have three trays of them, put them over here. Here's one of those trays. You can see how many are here. So it's probably gonna be about 180 meatballs. Now it's a pound and a half. It's gonna be about six to eight servings here. Just think about it as weight, how much meat you have here. Though it looks like a ton of meatballs, they're very tiny. All right, I have a eight quart Dutch oven, which is Pretty much you want a big pot. So if you don't have an eight quart Dutch oven, just use a regular eight quart uh, stock pot. Okay, medium heat. I have extra virgin olive oil here. This is Partana, but just use a good, you know, high quality one. I'm just coating the bottom about four or five tablespoons worth. And then you can just put in your onions, celery, and carrots all at the same time. It will be okay. And just mix them up, get the oil to coat. And we're gonna saute these until they're soft. It's gonna take about 10, 12 minutes, maybe nine. I'm gonna do a pinch of salt on here to aid in the water release. So it's been about maybe eight minutes, nine minutes. That's how they look. If you want them softer, you can keep cooking it longer. Just don't put, you don't really wanna put a lot of color on it. Here's the escarole. All right, I'm gonna put it all in here. Escarole is very hearty. So if you were using spinach, save your spinach till the end. Using escarole, you can put it in now. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in there. Just that much. And I just wanna give the escrow a little bit of a head start, just a couple minutes like this. Just to wilt it. See how much I had originally when I put it into the pot, and now it's going down. Okay, it's been just, just about two minutes in there, and it wilted perfectly like that. Let's put in all of our chicken broth or chicken stock or chicken base, low, make sure it's low sodium that you use. So let's bring this up to a boil and let's also add in our parm rind. If, if you don't have one of these, don't worry. You can still just put more grated cheese on at the end. Okay, I just kept the cover on it to boil quicker. So now it's boiling and now you can lower it to a simmer. Just take your wooden spoon, flat edge wooden spoon right here and just try to dislodge any brown bits, which is not gonna be much. Let's let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Taste it now because we're gonna cook pasta. Pasta, you know, you always wanna cook in salted water. I'm gonna put in a good pinch of salt here. Now remember, my broth, my 10 cups, have no salt in them. I know the meatballs have pecorino and salt, but still, I need a little bit more in here. If you are using better than bouillon, which is my, you know, product of choice, 
even the reduced sodium is extremely salty. So make sure you give it a taste. You're probably not gonna need any extra salt. I stirred it around. I'm gonna give it another taste. That's good. Just need a little pinch more. So listen, if you made your meatballs and you took your time and you made really small meatballs, you can put your meatballs and your pasta in at the same time. If your meatballs are bigger, put them in a couple minutes early. I raised my heat, it's about medium here. You can go a little bit lower if you want and we're just gonna try to get these meatballs in. And don't worry, they'll stay together in, as an individual meatball, they're not gonna clump. Okay, that's one sheet. Give it a tiny stir there so they, so they come apart, which is what they did. They cook so quickly when they're small like this. And I'm gonna put the pasta into. This is the Checo Chini di Pepe, which says eight minutes, but that's when it's at a boil. When it's at a moderate amount here, it's probably gonna take more like 10 minutes. Just take your spoon. You're not gonna crush any meatballs. Just go around the edge like this. And just you're just trying to get that pasta just apart so it doesn't stick at all. And you won't even be able to see any of the pasta right now, but it's Going, once it starts cooking, it will start rising to the top and the little pebbles, essentially, it's pastina, that's what it is. It's pas pastina pasta. It will just get larger. Pastina just means small pasta, so like any of these pastas would be fine for that. Okay, so you can see how they're all rising to the top now, all the pasta, but it's still hard. You know, I just checked it. It's probably been like six minutes in here. You know, a little stir, just so nothing's sticking to the bottom. Nothing sticking, but just cook it right till that pasta is done, and then right when it's done, we'll serve up a nice bowl for the taste tester. I must admit, I did a little taste testing in advance, and uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't want to give it away right now. We'll see what Tara thinks, then uh -oh. I'll say in a second. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. By the way, it's just piping hot, so we just yeah. put a couple ice cubes in here to cool it down. You want a little bit more cheese? Oh, yeah. You do a little swirl of uh, really good extra virgin olive oil on top, too, if you like. <laughs> I mean, I know what I think. It's delicious. Okay, it's the meatballs, right? They're really good. So usually when we make this, I'll, or if I make this, I'll follow your turkey meatball recipe. I mean, you can't deny that these have more flavor. Probably also the size of them. You want to take the cop out of just being like, oh, I don't want to make 200. I'll make 50 that are bigger. There's nothing wrong with that, but I do think it's a textural element here that yeah. vastly improves it. I, to be honest with you, I think if they were half the size of this, it would probably be that much better. Yeah, and it'd take you three times yeah. <laughs> as yeah. long to roll them. Yeah. No, this is this is delicious. And this it's is perfect. with the home, homemade brado, yeah. you, right? Yeah. You, you can tell that. I mean, it's just like a punch of flavor. Look, I love the, be the bouillon, better than bouillon beef and chicken base. The problem is, is that it still tastes artificial. I don't want to force you to start making homemade stocks and, and broths and everything, but you don't have to do it often. You can do it one time yeah. and then, you know, you might need another freezer, but you can actually ultra concentrate them. And so you won't have to have that much storage and then you can add water back to mm -hmm. them. How does it freeze with the pasta? I mean, the pasta is not gonna be as good. It'll be a little bit mushier. Yeah. You know, if you really, if you're by yourself and you're making this recipe, you might wanna cook the pasta on the side, just keep it. And every time you heat yourself up a bowl during the week, add some pasta in. Yeah. That's what that's what I would do. But for a family of four, five, whatever, six, you're probably gonna go through it all in one night. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect wedding soup. I wouldn't do anything to to improve it. I think it destroys the old, the other one. It, it does. And I I'm mean, leaving the, old, the, the old one is, is so good though. I still love that one. I'm leaving that video up. I'm not taking it down. So if you wanna see me from about three years ago, it's a turkey meatball wedding. Yeah. This is better though. Yeah, delicious. Thank you. So what does it get? I'm gonna give it a 10 because it's a perfect specimen of wedding soup. Yes. Probably don't wanna use the word specimen when we're talking about. Food. No, I listen, I agree. We'll see you next time. Thank you.